Hey there, my name is Steph. Welcome to the Artist Greenhouse. Today, we are gonna be painting crocuses in a sketchbook, and we're gonna be talking about iteration in your sketchbook practice and why that's important. So first, let's talk materials. I'm painting in an Archer and Olive blank notebook today. It's really wonderful for gouache painting and also for like markers and colored pencil. The paper is really smooth and really lovely and white. So it's, it's really great for this. So I'm just gonna um, use my little binder clips to hold my pages nice and flat because I hate it when they flap around, <laughs> it drives me crazy. So I'm um, just going to get those going and then we're going to talk a little bit about the paints that we're going to be using. We're using a combination of acrylic gouache and artist gouache. So I've got an ash yellow and a white um, and then I've got a permanent yellow deep gouache that I'm going to be using. I have also got this moss green which is oh it's such a good green color and it's hard to find a good green from a tube but this one's good. This is navy blue which I'm gonna use for mixing. And then I've got two purples, a peony and a bellflower. Neither one of these is perfect for the crocuses that I'm gonna be painting, but I think that if I mix these with some navy blue and maybe with each other, I'll get a really amazing color. So we're gonna look at that in just a second, the color mixing. Um, for right now, let's go ahead and paint in just a solid background on this, just to give us something other than a white page. Now, I am using a little bit of white artist gouache, and I'm mixing that with some ash yellow acrylic gouache. Now, the reason that I'm using acrylic gouache for the background is because once I put it down, it will not lift up. So I'm mixing this with a little bit of the white artist gouache, and because this ash yellow is acrylic gouache, it's going to make sure that the white also doesn't lift up. So this color that I mix from here isn't gonna lift from the background when I start painting with my water-soluble gouache colors, so that's nice. So I've just added a bunch of water to my little um, dabs of the yellow and the white. I'm just gonna mix them together really loosely here. And then I'm just gonna paint, um, I'm gonna leave a white border on the page cause I like that. Um, you can paint all the way to the edges if you wanted to, but I like having this white border. So I'm just gonna roughly block in this area and it's gonna just give me a really nice, you know, like I said, just a color foundation, something that isn't white. So just doing this can help you get started in your sketchbook if you're a person who like has trouble getting past that fear of the blank page. Just painting in a simple background or a texture like this really makes a ton of difference. So it makes it a whole lot easier um, and it's just, it's a nice way to start. So I just picked um, the sort of like off yellow color because I think it's going to be a good foundation with the purples and the greens and all that. So we'll see if that actually works out how I think it's gonna work out as we start painting. So while this dries, I actually have got a little piece of um, like cheap watercolor paper right here, and I'm gonna use it to test some mixes. Um, so like I said, I don't actually think that the two colors that I have, the two purples, um, are good choices for these crocuses. And I think if I mix in some navy blues, that I'm gonna get some really good colors. So we'll we'll see if that is true as, as we move along here. So I'm gonna start just um, doing some test mixes and painting them on this little piece of card here. Um, I'm just gonna start first by looking at the colors themselves without any other paints mixed. And then I'll take a look at the mixed with maybe some navy blue and then maybe with some white as well. Now, one of the other reasons that I like to you know, mix colors like this instead of using them straight from the tube is that it helps everything be harmonious. So if I have um, one color that I'm using to mix with all of my other colors, it's going to make everything feel harmonious and happy because I have a mother color, you know, a, a base color that's being mixed in with everyone else. So that can be helpful. Um, I'm not necessarily going to mix this navy blue with all of my colors on this palette, but I am going to mix it with these purples and I think I might also um, dab it in the moss green that I'm gonna use because I need to get a, a deeper green as well. So that's that's gonna be nice. Now, 
This first attempt here is definitely too blue. <laughs> Um, I like the color a lot, actually. Um, I think it's a lovely blue, but I just don't think it's right for this. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this peony color. It's a, it's a little bit more magenta and see if we can get a nice purple. And that's a nice purple, right? Like that's that's going to be a really nice color for the crocuses. Um, I know it looks a little dark in the video when I paint it, but it's it's really not that dark in per person. It's just, it's a really nice color. Um, so yeah, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that for my purple. All right. And since we're here, <laughs> since we have um, this little card out and to test our mixes, I'm actually going to go ahead and test the rest of my colors as well. So I'm just going to add my permanent yellow deep down here to the bottom. Um, it's really cute that I'm going to try to not make a mess of this palette and have all the colors run together because we all know <laughs> that all the colors are going to run together. Um, I just, I don't like palettes with wells. <laughs> I like this big, like, you know, open space. And when you work with any sort of like wet materials, like they tend to just eventually like become one big blob. So that's for sure what's going to happen. <laughs> But I just want to um, swatch out my yellows and my greens and make sure that they will look nice with the purple that I've chosen. And then I think I might also just add a little bit of white to my palette in a second and do a lighter version of this purple because I'll need some variation for the, um, the leaves, not the leaves, the petals of the crocus. I'll need some variation in color. So I want to make sure that if I use a pale color, it's nice. I'm just going to mix this green with a little bit of this navy blue so I can kind of get this nice um, darker green color. Um, you see I'm already so sloppy with my palette, but that's okay. <laughs> We're already smushing colors together. Um, this dark green is really beautiful. It's really nice. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of white to my palette now. And I'm just going to test out um, this lighter lighter purple color just to make sure that my mix of this darker color works as a lighter color as well because like I said I do need that variation when I start painting the crocuses so let's go ahead and just grab a little bit of purple here and not try to ruin all my white <laughs> oh man <laughs> there so many painters are are so much more meticulous than I am <laughs> about keeping their palettes clean and mixing neatly I am definitely not that person. Um, oh, actually, I like this um, lavender color a little bit better than the darker color. That's really nice. So I think this is going to be a really good, um, a really good setup for this painting. So let's get started. So I'm just going to start by doing a light sketch, and then I'm going to paint over this and gouache and then probably come back in with this pencil and add some final details. I think that this, um, this is a deep cadmium orange luminance pencil. And I think that the bright orange against the bluish purples and the greens is really going to be lovely. So I think that's going to be really nice. Now, one of the things that I want to do while we're painting here is I want to talk about iteration in your sketchbook practice. And this is something that came up a couple weeks ago when we did the five minute sketchbook challenge. I mentioned iteration as part of my sketchbook practice um, and had a couple really good discussions about it because there's this real tendency, especially when you're a new artist and you're not feeling that confident, um, there's a tendency if you draw or paint something even moderately successfully, you're like, okay, well, I'm never going to draw that again. <laughs> I've, I've done it. I don't want to like jinx it by trying it again and possibly messing it up. So I shall never draw this again. And that's not really, you know, how we learn and become better artists by approaching the same subject matter in a variety of different, you know, mediums and styles. That's how we can really learn, um, you know, by doing things like exploring, different proportions and textures and marks. That's how we really learn what we like as artists. That's how we discover new things that we maybe wouldn't have discovered otherwise. So I'm a big fan of iteration in sketchbook practice. You will see me drawing the same things over and over again. Like, you know, I drew um, crocuses during the five minute sketchbook challenge with watercolor inks in five minutes. Um, and there were so many things that I really liked about that quick sketch. And I knew that I wanted to try like, um, a more like cleaned up version of 
you know, painting crocuses in my sketchbook. So this is what I'm doing today. And then I also kind of have an idea that, um, I'd like to play with scale as well. So this is kind of like painting crocuses, like at size, <laughs> like if I picked a crocus from my garden and brought it in here and laid it down on my sketchbook, it's, they're pretty much this size, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, so I think that following this one, maybe not immediately, um, but at some point in the future, I'm thinking about painting a sketch, a crocus in my sketchbook where maybe one crocus takes up like the whole double page spread. Um, so I can really experiment a lot with like textures and layering and transparencies. And I've got some cool ideas there. Um, but the point is I'm taking the same subject matter from my five minute sketchbook challenge and I am painting it again and again and again. Um, because I enjoy, you know, I enjoy painting flowers. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not a struggle, but because like this helps me explore as an artist and, you know, find things that I wouldn't have discovered otherwise, you know, I mean, I've, I've illustrated like 60 children's books at this point. So like, I feel pretty confident in my general foundational skills as an artist, but I'm still always, you know, making room for like playfulness and exploration. And I'm always finding these like really joyful, happy accidents that I can use in my illustration work that I can use in my, uh, abstract paintings. Like there's this sketchbook practice is kind of like the center of all of those things that help me grow as an artist. And I really love that. And I think that the phrase sketchbook practice is really key when we're, I mean, A, talking about making art, but B, talking about iteration, because it is a practice. It is, you know, like if you are a musician, you know, you practice at piano, you practice at playing guitar. There's, there's always something else that, you know, you can learn and discover and get better at. So it's, it, it's a practice. It's a showing up. It's, it's a doing the thing. It's working to get better and more creative at this thing. And I know from my experience that showing up for a sketchbook practice will make you a more confident artist. And I mean, obviously a better artist, you know, if you're showing up, you know, over time doing a thing, you will naturally become better at it. But more important than that is that the skill, the improved skill that you're getting from your sketchbook practice lets you be more confident as an artist. And that means that it's easier to make the art that's in your head. You know, you, you have the skills and you also have the confidence to try the things that are in your head, even when they seem kind of like crazy. Um, like what I'm doing right now with these crocuses <laughs> doesn't, doesn't really seem to make any sense yet, but like stick with me here. <laughs> This is, this is just the first few layers. Um, but yeah, man, I just sticking with your sketchbook practice is the thing that is going to help you build your skills and also build your confidence. And that's going to help you make better art overall, no matter if you are a person who makes art in their sketchbook for fun, or if you are a beginner who hopes to become a painter or an illustrator, or if you are a working painter or an illustrator and you, you know, feel a little stuck and you want to explore some new things like your sketchbook is there for you. Having a consistent sketchbook practice is going to help you grow no matter where you are in your art practice, whether you are brand new or you are like a seasoned professional. So for me, honestly, like sketchbook practice, like I said, is just like the center of what I do. If I'm feeling stuck creatively, I can come to my sketchbook and make some messes and experiment with some paint and some different materials. And it helps if I am feeling frustrated because I can't seem to draw something <laughs> for some reason. Um, you know, like if I come upon something in a children's book manuscript that I've never illustrated before, and I'm feeling frustrations because I can't quite get it right off the bat. I come to my sketchbook. I make a lot of messy sketches. I explore, I try different things and it helps, you know, um, if you are a new artist and you're really annoyed because you don't have the ability to get the ideas from your head onto your paper, sketchbook practice is what helps that making more art is what makes you capable of making better art. You know, if you're trying to find your voice as an artist and you're struggling with that, having a sketchbook practice can help you with that. If you are 
already an artist and you want to revamp your style or explore some new mediums, your sketchbook practice is also there for that. Um, I'm not saying that like sketchbook practice is going to cure like every art ailment, but like also I am kind of saying that. <laughs> I am kind of saying that. So have a sketchbook practice. Now, what I have learned through my own experience with cultivating a sketchbook practice is that it works best with a gentle structure that will support your creative growth. So, you know, sort of like how some flowers in your garden need extra support to, to grow and bloom and be healthy and happy. So, you know, the, the level and the specifics of your gentle structure, it's going to be a little different than mine. It'll be a little different than the next artist. Um, but I want to share what works for me. And one of those things is iteration, which is what we're going to talk about today. And I'm also going to talk about another couple things as well that go with iteration that are going to help you grow into a more confident artist. So, you know, maybe my, what I do is going to work for you. Um, but at the very minimum, maybe it'll give you some ideas to help support your own sketchbook practice. Now, depending on your personality type, the idea of structure around creativity could be off-putting, but I have found time and again that even having a hint of structure creates a sense of creative freedom and sort of like an endless space for art exploration that I wouldn't have without like some sort of structure around my art practice. So my gentle structure for my sketchbook practice is grounded in three words that start with I, and yes, one of them is iteration. <laughs> The other ones are intuition and intention. So let's just start with intuition. Um, this is, you know, everything in my sketchbook practice starts with like intuition or what I call following the what ifs. In this first phase of sketchbook practice, logic and planning are not invited. Judgment is not allowed. And this is kind of like what we did with our five minute sketchbook challenge. We just showed up, we made some art with a timer. We maybe had a, a loose idea of what we were gonna draw, but we didn't expect the art to be perfect. We didn't expect to do anything except to maybe fill a page or two of a sketchbook. Like that's it, that's amazing. So in this first phase, it really just starts with a curiosity about drawing or painting a subject matter. Um, in this example, crocuses. So, you know, when I um, first um, painted the crocuses in the five minute sketchbook challenge, I didn't really know how I wanted to render them right away. Um, but you know, I was really interested in their colors and in the shapes of the flowers and in some of like the textures, um, and the mark making I could try. So I was just kind of starting from that place of curiosity. Now, once I get started, I might instinctively reach for a certain tube of paint or a certain brush. And, you know, I might, as I go along, I might wonder about being playful with the proportions or, you know, I might be called to do something that I'm comfortable with, or I might be called to try something a little different than my usual tried and true approach. But it all starts with curiosity and then it continues with curiosity and with this sense of openness and wonder and willingness to try new things and just kind of like see what happens because this is the intuition part, the following the what ifs is just the first phase in the art that I'm making in my sketchbook. So, you know, I'm asking myself at this point, you know, like maybe I should try a different brush. Maybe I could um, layer the colors in a different way. Maybe I should add some line art details. Maybe I should focus on shape this time. Um, you know, all of these things are happening in this phase where I'm just kind of like following the what ifs, following my intuition. And then that kind of leads me to the second phase, which is iteration, which, you know, like I said, we've already mentioned this when we talked about the five minute sketchbook challenge and how important it is to not just stop with your first successful attempt or even your first attempt at drawing something. So, you know, I hope that you don't settle for the first decent thing <laughs> that you have drawn, painted, or illustrated. I hope that you give yourself some more space to explore. Um, I know it's tempting. I know sometimes when you get something like just right, you're like, okay, I'm never going to draw this again. <laughs> I'm never going to paint this again. Um, but you know, like what if there's more to explore? What if there's more to like, now that I have a basic understanding of say the shapes of the crocuses, you know, what if I learned that? in my five minute sketchbook challenge. And now I wanna take that curiosity and I wanna iterate and I wanna to try to maybe paint in some slightly different styles with some slightly different materials and experiment you know, with different textures and mark making and kind of figure out what I like. 
and sort of like make note of that as I go. It's always about curiosity and growth in your sketchbook practice. You know, um, if I, you know, if I paint something that I think is, you know, perfectly good right out of the gate, of course, I'm going to take a second to celebrate that. I'm going to pay attention to why that painting or drawing feels so satisfying. I'm going to make note of those things because I will need those for like, you know, the next phase of iteration and also for any future art making. It's so good to make note of the things that I enjoyed in the process and the things that I'm really satisfied in the result as well. But knowing that I've celebrated that art, that I've noticed what feels so satisfying about the work or the process, now I can follow the what ifs again. Now I can iterate. I can try different compositions, colors, materials, layouts, techniques, all from a place of fun and curiosity. Maybe a happy accident is going to lead me to a new art discovery. Maybe I'll just enjoy the process of making the art, which I almost always do, but decide that I'm happiest with my first, you know, iteration of a crocus or a dove or whatever else I'm painting. Iteration is also key when a piece of art goes sideways. <laughs> So it's not just when we make good art and we don't want to, you know, ruin it by trying to do that same subject matter again. It also is great if we are unsatisfied with something. So if I'm not satisfied with a piece of art, first, I like to look for like the bits and pieces of the finished art or the process that I do like. And then with that knowledge, I ask myself, what could I do differently next time? And then I give it a try. You know, bouncing between intuition and iteration until the art feels better to me or until I accept that it's just not happening today and I can leave it and I can come back tomorrow with fresh eyes or with fresh subject matter. And that brings us to the third part of our gentle sketchbook practice structure, which is intention. So the first two phases in the structure, intuition and iteration, are usually the messy parts for me. I'm figuring things out, I'm letting my art wander, I'm going with the flow in the best way my uptight self can. <laughs> the final phase, intention, is when everything I've learned during the intuition and iteration phases comes together. And it's important to note that sometimes this entire process, all three phases, takes weeks or months or even longer. Sometimes it takes days or even hours. We have no control over that, <laughs> how long it's going to take. We just have to like go along for the ride. So my sketchbook helps me settle into the joy of the process instead of focusing on the outcome. So I let the what ifs do their wandering for as long as they want. But when it comes time to bring everything together to make some art, it's time to visit with our friend intention. So for me, intention in my sketchbook practice means planning, sometimes a little, sometimes a lot. It could mean planning a painting with some light sketching instead of just going straight in with some painted shapes and being messy and free flowing with it. It could mean choosing a color palette in advance or even choosing like a feeling or a vibe for the art. And it could mean revisiting notes from previous sketchbook sessions or reviewing photos of a process whenever I need a quick refresher. Whereas in the intuition phase, I'm starting with just like a vague idea. In the intention phase, I have a loose plan for the art process. Sometimes that plan gets ditched halfway through the process, um, which is like kind of what happened with these crocuses. <laughs> I started off thinking that I was going to paint the, um, the petals and just kind of like a really like loose um, sort of almost like splotchy painterly sort of style. And then once I got into it, I sort of naturally gravitated towards blending the colors and adding some line art instead. So that happens. It's fine. It's just part of being an artist, right? <laughs> just just changing your mind halfway through. It's just part of being an artist. Now, what matters to me, though, is starting the intention part of the process with a few thoughts on how I'm going to get from the idea to the art. So that's it. So for me, Intuition, iteration, and intention are the foundations of my gentle structure for my sketchbook practice. They are the dirt in my art flower garden. So when you think about it in your own art practice, in your own sketchbook practice, what concepts are you already using to ground that practice? Like what are you already naturally using without even thinking about it? And are there places where you were feeling stuck in your sketchbook practice. And can you think of how a gentle structure might help you with that? 
you can use my ideas of intuition, iteration, and intention as a starting point. You can use those as your own gentle structure if that feels good for you. Um, if not, take some time to think about what might be helpful to you as an artist, you know, like what might be helpful to you and your personality type. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed our little chat about, about intuition, iteration, and intention in sketchbook practice. They're all so important. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like this video. I also have a weekly newsletter called The Artist Letters where you will get um, reminders of these new videos and you will also get reminders of classes, sales, and you will get um, actual like written newsletters with content like what I've just been chatting with you about. So there is a link in the description below the video to subscribe. Um, you can also get the free sketchbook starter guide if you need help with that. Um, getting started with your sketchbook practice, I mean, you can download that for free. And there's also a link below to take a class at the Artist Greenhouse, including our beginner sketchbook class, which is called Sketchbook Seats. So I'm going to keep painting. I'm just going to rock some music for the rest of this session. Enjoy as I finish up painting these crocuses. And don't forget to take some time to create your own gentle structure for your sketchbook practice.